and we can have a quick conversation. So welcome, Julia. Can you hear me? Yes. How are you? I am very well. Thanks for asking. Um, welcome to Rio Power Hour. Um, would you mind starting off by just introducing yourself? Tell me who you are and where you're calling from. I am Julia Johnson. I'm, I'm talking on the behalf of my husband, Kurt Johnson, okay. and I'm in uh, Ackworth, Georgia, which is a suburb of Atlanta. Oh, right up the street from me. I'm, I'm in Atlanta right now. So uh, very good. Um, so uh, what can I do to help you today then, Julia? Well, I was trying to see was this um, device and this program good for my husband. He had a massive stroke in November of 2019, and that was due to ABM. He um, cannot use his right side at all. Okay. Uh, we've been in therapy. We have had our rounds of therapy outpatient, and also um, he was in a therapy clinic in the uh, beginning of um, 2020. Um, now it's time for us to go back to therapy. And mm -hmm. I was trying to make sure that, um, um, you know, I don't want to send him back to a program that he kept getting dismissed from because of making no progress. Sure. So right now he doesn't talk, but he does understand most everything you say. Okay. And um, he uh, is very little to... He's not that motivated. I don't know if um, because of, you know, just the plasticity and, you know, how painful everything is. But um, I feel that cognitively he's ready to go to the next step, I feel. I, I, I do as many stretches and things that I can for him. But I feel like that... Um, we need to find the correct program for him to where he's sure. getting, uh, instead of like one day a week through therapy, that he will be getting an outpatient. Um, that you know he needs something that where he can do something every every single day, you know, to start getting his you know movement back and feelings back, and just trying to see how I can help him move forward. Sure, sure. Well, thanks so much for that, Julie. I really appreciate the information. And it's a tough situation. I think you guys found yourself kind of at that really inopportune time when you need to be in rehab and then COVID right. happened and all this, this rigmarole. So I, um, um, uh, my heart goes out to you guys. It, you know, I think a lot of stroke survivors and their family members found themselves in the situation and it is a tough one. Um, tough one, period. That's about it. Yes. Now, with, re with respect to the situation you guys find yourselves in with um, rehab clinics and in terms of sort of that uh, lack of progress and, and sort of inadequacies there, that's also a very, very common situation, I think. So not that it's good to be, um, to, to have more than one people or more than one person experience that, but I say that's, it's very, very common experience and, and you're not alone in that case. So with that being said, I think there's a couple of things that we should discuss. I think okay. in terms of the utility of something like this, something like a robotic system for him, I think we can certainly make sure that it would probably work for him in terms of his anatomy and his physiology. I think that's probably the case. Um, and we've seen that you know, time and time again, individuals like this have experienced benefits and range of motion strength and, and potentially even active movement in these certain cases, okay. uh, which is really good. Now, that being said, I'm going to just, I'll, I'll provide some, some cautionary tales here. And I think that is, or some cautionary discussion. And mm -hmm. that is motivation is super, super important. I think that can't be underscored enough because one of the most important aspects of this process is not simply that the robotic system is there to move you, right? That's, that's all well and good. And that may help mm -hmm. prevent contractures and these sorts of things. It might help improve tissue quality. But if we're talking about the necessity of the intervention to drive improvements in our brains, that has to be someone who's willing and able to be actively engaged for a long, long time to induce those positive changes. Okay. And, and, and what, I, what I like to kind of um, like to liken this to is the process by which we learn to move for the very first time. So um, I don't know what your experience is with, with young kids, but I'm sure you've probably seen young kids out there that have, um, have been the process of learning to walk for the very first time, 
right? You spend a lot of years, maybe, maybe, maybe one year trying to stand up for the very first time, maybe taking your first sort of um, developmental step. And that's a pretty mm-hmm. ugly thing in terms of like, it's not really coordinated, um, but it takes a long time of discoordinated movements to generate that network. And it takes years after that to actually refine that network to then eventually become, you know, um, us walking around normally. And of course, you know, world-class athletes and these sorts of things. So it takes a long time for those networks to be established and to be um, sort of stabilized. And that doesn't happen passively, right? The way it happens is you are doing the movements, right? If I'm learning to pick up this cup of coffee, I have to try to pick up this cup of coffee. And when I fail, I'm going to know it, right? I have to actively engage my hand, my right hand in this case, to try to reach out and pick up this cup of coffee. And then when I fail and I overreach it, right? I'm given the feedback of, hey, now I missed the cup of coffee. I need to change those neurons that I, I recruited into a different configuration and say, okay, I'm gonna try again. Oh, I come over here. I overshot in the opposite way. Or hey, maybe I, I, I went too hard and I knocked the cup, cup of coffee over. We can only do this when we're actively engaged in activities. Um, that's the way that we can recruit those neurons and begin that learning process and to begin to re- reinstantiate those networks again. If we don't have motivation, um, A, we can't engage in activities like this. And B, wow. the long-term sort of outcomes, because it does take a long time, right? We're talking months, years, potentially, or lifetimes to actually, um, you know, be on this positive trajectory towards more function. And so I just bring that up as a, as a, as a, as a mention, because you, you, um, you discussed that he was not that motivated. I think that doesn't mean that he can switch, right? He could certainly switch and become more motivated when he starts to get positive feedback and people start to buy into his recovery and know, hey, yeah, you can still improve. Um, so I think there's there's some factors that are also sort of maybe contributing to that lack of motivation because, you know, he's potentially had the healthcare system to say, hey, you can't do any better than you've already done. And that that's a that's a challenge and we can hopefully um, address that, but it's, it's an important factor that I felt needs to be mentioned. Wow. Yeah. So it's, it's a tough one. And I think the thing is, 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 you know, all of us here um, in a support group, all of us here at Modus Nova, um, we all know that we can continue to improve. And I think that improvement um, really, um, it depends, right? And, and it's, it's the little things too, right? If you spend a year of not having any active movement in your arm and you suddenly see some active movements and contractions, right? That can be huge, right? That can be a massive motivating factor. And so I think when it comes to, trying to find those little details, robotic systems can be very good for this because they can detect very, very small movements and display that on a screen. And so these robotic systems can also help you sort of engage in much more of a, a rich environment instead of being in kind of a, a you know, a rehab hospital where you're maybe doing these repetitive tasks. Um, you can do the repetitive tasks, but you're just playing games. And so there are some advantages that the robotic systems have to help someone um, find their way onto a path of motivation and find their way onto a path of seeing progress. So I know that that's a, it's a tough discussion we just had, but I think there are some potential avenues that a robotic based system like the motor scan could help um, overcome mm-hmm. those. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm looking for. Yeah. Um, just to see uh, if, I keep saying, you know, if he's motivated enough, he seems sure. to, right now I, I just hope that he's ready mentally because i know that's sure. that's most of the battle sure he, yeah he got, and yep. and um let me look at the program a little bit more and sure. uh, to make sure that you know he's ready for it and yeah and, and well, well julia let me, let me put it to you this way um, if you guys want to move forward with it, great. If you don't want to move forward to it, that's fine too, right? The thing for me is we want to have the systems in people's hands and their feet um, that it can help. And if that's not a good fit for you guys, that's totally fine, right? Okay. Um, but we, we would encourage you in any event, I would really much encourage you guys to get involved in the support group. It's a great community there. There's people very much like um, you and your husband who are you know, we're lifelong recovery and trying to always improve. And so I think that's a great community there to kind of A, share information, but also to help sort of garner some inspiration, garner some motivation right? because reha- yeah. rehab is so protracted. Yeah. And so I think, you know, especially too, if you, if you have more questions, I'd love for you to come back on and, uh, and talk to me. Um, I'm 
you know, I'm pretty busy. <laughs> it's, but th these are, these are great opportunities to chat. And so I can certainly um, answer any more questions that you do have. All right. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Very good. Okay. So um, actually, Julie, I would very much welcome you to stick around. I think there might be other individuals here that might benefit um, okay. from, from, uh, or I guess you might benefit from hearing them and they might benefit from hearing you. So um, very much encourage um, open dialogue here. Thank you.